get ready to elevate your GD script skills as I show you in this video how to not only create a class, but assign it an icon and how to properly initialize it. All right, so to start off here in my scene, all I have here is just a control node. So I have something to see, something to save in a scene that we can save so I can show you how it works down in the output. It just has a blank script on it. It has a blank script on it, as you see here. It's just an empty script that extends the control that it is attached to. All right, so first off, let's talk about what is a class in GD script. Well, a class is essentially kind of like a template. Uh, for creating objects. An example of this would be the control here, or a label, a texture rect. All these nodes that you see, all these objects, they all come from this base template, or the class as the proper name would be for these. And you create objects from classes. Now, it allows us to define the characteristics and behavior of a particular type of object. So you'll notice that when we create things uh, in, and take a look at things in the inspector, we'll notice all of the green nodes there, all of the UI nodes, all the UI components, they all come down from control. So whatever control has, everything that's created from it also has all of those same properties and aspects to it. So if I were to click on my control and look in the inspector, we can see uh, these things include things like the anchor, margin, grow direction, the uh, rect, which is going to give us our things like size and scale, the hint, focus, uh, mouse, input, size flags, theme, visibility, all this stuff. Anything that comes from a control, such as, again, all of our UI nodes, are going to inherit all of these features by default. Now, a control is inherited uh, or is created from a node which is a, the icon for is just a, an empty white circle. And anything that comes from below that, which goes into our 2D node, our 3D, and our control, all inherit from that base node. Now that base node doesn't really have anything in the inspector. It's pretty empty. If you want to take a look at it, by all means, add one to your scene and take a look at it. It's not really adding anything, but it is the so supposed, we could say, father of all the other nodes in the language, all the other classes. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new class inside of our project. So I'm just going to right click down here in my file system and create a new script. All right. And the name of it, I'm just going to call it, um, I'll call it enemy underscore class. And just hit enter and I'm going to double click on that and open it up. All right. So we have a script We can see it's extending from node. So it doesn't have anything as a base, which can be fine depending on what it is you're looking uh, for your class to do. Maybe you want it to extend something else. But for us, a node in this example is perfectly fine. So now that we have this set up, we have our script created. Let's go ahead and create a class. And creating a class is actually very simple. All we have to do is type in class underscore name, put a space, and give our class a name. In this, in this case, I'm going to go with enemy since the script here is called enemy class. And technically, that's all we have to do. We can now come into our control and say inside of our ready function, we can create a variable, we'll call it e. And we can now create enemy. And as you see, it changed to that, that uh, light green there. That is the default color for a class. And we can create new. There we go. And now we have a new instance of that enemy class. Now, of course, that class has absolutely nothing in it. But we can now create one. But what if we want to move this up? We want to take this to another level. And if you see here, we come in here, we go into our nodes, we can type in enemy, and we can see it's here. It comes from the node, and it just has that basic white icon that a node has. 
Well, for us, we're actually going to put a comma after our class name. We're going to input a string, and this string will be a path to uh, an image. In my case, I'm just going to use icon.png just because I don't have anything else in this project, and I just honestly don't feel like digging around the computer to find something that would be suitable. Now, you'll notice that the image does not change here. And if we go to change type, uh, we can see it here in the recent. Uh, when you click on it, and if you go ahead and search it, you'll see it, but you won't see it in your tree. Uh, you probably won't see it in the tree if you just added it. Uh, and to fix that, you just go head on up to your project and just hit reload current project, and that'll sort itself out. But of course, if you're not going to have it in the tree, then the icon doesn't matter, so that's going to be very dependent on uh, what your code is to do. Uh, for example, I'm going to delete this out there. Uh, when I made the achievement plugin way, way early on the channel, just about a year ago now, um, I gave it an icon. And that was because it was meant to be in the scene because it's going to handle all of the achievement, right? It holds all of your data. You can input your data in through the inspector. Uh, as well as some other properties to customize our achievement pop-up. So in that case, an icon makes sense. In this case, um, of it being an enemy class, does not make too much sense for us to put an icon, but that's how you do it. It's easy to do, simple to do. And let's move on to how we initialize a, a uh, object or a class. Now, let's talk about that underscore init function, which as you see here, underscore init is the name of the function, and that just stands for initialize. Now, if you didn't know, any function that starts with an underscore is a default built-in function. So if we come in here, function underscore, and we can see all of these default ones that come as pretty standard for every node and one we're going to be looking at is underscore init which is to initialize now this function is used to initialize a new object when it is created so if we look back here when we said enemy.new when we call this new we're creating a new object when that object is created the first thing that happens is this function runs this the function to initialize that class or to initialize that object that's being created. Now this happens automatically when we call new, and you'll notice things like uh, the label or if you're creating any other item through code, you can probably just put in new and you don't have to pass in any other arguments, which is fine. However. When you want to get a little more advanced, such as something like an enemy class here, this enemy class, it might be holding, I'm just going to come down here and put a pass in there, but this enemy class might have some variables, right? It might have the HP. Whoops. Here we go. Uh, it might hold the HP of your enemy. It might hold the, the name of your enemy. It might you know, etc. right? It might have the damage that it's going to do, or the, it's uh, some kind of defense, or whatever is going on uh, for that specific enemy. And then, because it's an enemy class, we could modify this for each enemy, and we can have a bunch of functions and stats and things that we can reuse on every enemy. So, that would be a benefit that we could do here. But how do we do this initialization? Well, as you see here, we just do func underscore in it. And we already have the function. But we want to go a little more in depth. Now to initialize the init function means that we're setting up the initial state of the object when it's created. Now, for example, uh, we have our class here called enemy that re represents an enemy in something like a game. And we may want to initialize this object with certain attributes, such as its health points, like we mentioned above. Uh, other attributes here might be uh, maybe the attack damage or the movement speed for that enemy. 
So how can we do this? Well, we have our variables up here, of course. Um, but then we want to say in here, when this object gets created, we're going to ask for a health in the form of an integer. Um, and maybe uh, if we want, we can ask for a name of some sort. I'm just going to go ahead and add health in there. And now you see when we come in here, uh, what we want to do in this init function is we want to set our variable. So we want to set HP is equal to the health that gets passed in. Now, if you already created your object and you head back over to it, let's see if this pops up. There we go. We actually have an error now. And the reason why we have that error is because when we initialize our object, we have parameters. And those parameters parameters need to get passed into this new function when it's created. So if we put an integer in there, such as 5, you see this error goes away because now we filled out or you passed in um, arguments to fill in the initialize step when the object gets created. So now if you wanted, we can go ahead and we'd be able to print this out, e.hp. Uh, does that autofill? Yes, it does. So you see these will also autofill because it's part of the class. Uh, but you see if we print that out now, we're going to get 5 because that's the number or the int that we're passing in for the initialization portion. And down in the output, we see we got 5. We can go ahead and change this to another number. We'll say 50. There we go. This enemy now has 50 health. So you can see how this can be very, very useful as uh, you move on through or want to leveling up or advance your code, maybe clean it up a bit and move things into different classes. Admittedly, I don't do this as often as I should. Uh, whatever for, and this goes into some object oriented programming, which is a whole nother section of itself. But there you go. There's how we create a. This is how we cr properly create a class. How we can add a custom icon to it, and how we properly initialize it with custom values.